start worship through song. We're going to give you a few moments alone with the Lord. Maybe we haven't had time to uh, get your heart prepared yet. It's been crazy. Uh, so just take a few moments and then we'll begin uh, worshiping God this morning.
the youth is serving you today. And they're going to have food after church. And they're going to use any donation that you give them for their Mexicano taco bar. Taco bar. That's right. And dessert auction. Yeah. It's, it's going to be used for camp. And uh, they do camps every summer. And this, So anything that you donate, it's a, everything is donation. So as you go over there and they serve you, whatever you use or whatever you choose to give them will be used. Uh, later on this summer for ministry. So anyway, welcome to New Heights Church. I'm Pastor Mark Elkins. Really excited that you're here today. Really excited to have the opportunity of worshiping with you today. In your bulletin, there's one of these cards. If you are visiting with us or if you've got a prayer request or if you've got some kind of need, this is a great way to get us information about you, what you need. You can write your prayer request on the back. But we've got some really great news. If you're part of the classes, if you want to know membership, or if you're wanting to grow maturity, uh, or if you're wanting to be disciple, or whatever the case may be, we have a way to connect with you. Every Sunday, we're offering one of those classes. And today's class is the maturity class. If you want to know how to study your Bible better, if you want to know how to pray better, Mark's coming. She's next door working with kids. But uh, she's going to do that after church. And if you're interested in that, all you got to do is stick around and see her. And, and uh, we'll have that class for you and all that. So welcome today. Lots of good stuff going on here at New Heights Church. Let's just continue in this time of worship. Prayer, if you would, just follow with me. And let's go to the good morning prayer. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for the gift of laughter. Thank you for the gift of, of the teenagers, the youth, the ministry that you've given us here today. And God, we ask your blessing on them as they do this today, that you would just bless them, that you would provide all their needs for them. For our church, dear God, as we come to worship you, we want to set this time aside. Sanctify this time. Make it holy. Holy Spirit, fill this place with who you are. And as you're here, God, draw us near to you. Speak to our hearts. Revive us. And then change us in the very image of Jesus. That's our prayer. We love you, God. In Jesus' name. <laughs>
Indeed, our God is great. Our God is awesome. He provides all we need. He calms the most chaotic of hearts. He is our Savior. And He is holy. Holy, holy, holy. And every time we sing this song, I think of the scripture in Revelation that talks about, I've said this before, the angels, the cherubim, and seraphim that just circle and these majestic, just unique looking creatures circling all day and night for all of eternity. Um, holy, holy, holy is the Lord who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy. They're just screaming. They're screaming because he's so majestic. Do we get that? Am I the only one that's picturing that in their head right now? He's awesome. Amen? Amen. He's holy. May we sing this song with just how holy he is just in our mind and just sing that to him. He's worthy of our praise, church, and may we give it to him. He is holy, holy, holy. Sing this with us.
song written by someone that uh, Kyle and I used to know. And um, it's all about um, just begging God to teach us how to love um, others in the way that He um, loves everyone, regardless of um, race or addiction or um, money or the lack thereof. Um, just teaching us to love like, like the Lord does. And um, just read the words, pray these words if, if you don't um, know this. And may it just be our prayer in our heart um, as a church together. <laughs>
Church, would you pray with me? God, that is our prayer. That you would just reveal yourself to us in such a way that we are transformed. That people see you in us. They experience your love. That we speak your words of love, mercy, and kindness. And that we go into our world. And as we're going, that we just, we love like you do. God, we find ourselves and binded, bound by things and chained by things and held up by things. But God, today I believe that you want to set us free. That you want to bring hope. That you want to bring encouragement and, and just courage. You want to bring strength and life that enables us to live a life that is set free. To live a life that is like Jesus. To be able to love. To be able to forgive be able to smile and laugh. And God, I just pray that now over your children that are here today that we would be receptive, that we would truly receive that, that message, and that we would live it. God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you would, uh, why don't you reach next door and uh, shake three people's hands. Tell them welcome to New Heights Church. Wow. While you're coming back, why don't you uh, go ahead and be seated and we'll let our children be dismissed if you're here from the ages of four years old and fourth grade. Four years old and fourth grade. Miss Joyce's class is going to hang out with us today. So if you're Miss Joyce's class, you'll stay here. But if you're between the ages of four years old and fourth grade or if you've got a child that's younger than four years old, we've got a nursery set up over there. They can go over there with those kids and, and uh, we'll have a message set for them. We welcome you again today to New Heights Church. If you're our guest, we are so excited that you're here. And, and um, I, we've got a message for you today, from I believe from the Lord. But can I just say, let me just begin by saying that church people can be the meanest people that I've ever met. Amen. Amen. I can do a witness to that. I mean, the most backbiting, you know, throat cutting, whatever, you know, I mean, they can just wear you out. And I want to take a moment to apologize to you on behalf of church people. If you have been the target of a church person, I want to take just a moment and, and just apologize for their behavior and, 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 and ask for forgiveness. As a, as, as a pastor, as me, I want to share with a little bit of my story today. I have had letters written to what we might call our elders, the people above me, the people that are at the state level. I've had pastors make phone calls about me, and the allegations were just totally untrue. The, the things that were said were just, they were just flat out lies. And i got to tell you, the people that wrote these letters, the people that made these phone calls would fall into the category of good people. If you were walking down the road and you were to see them, you'd think, oh, that's a good person. And, and so it's not like these are mean people or mean-hearted people, but they, they just fell to a lie. They, they, they fell to fear. And, and truthfully, the reason these things were said and done was because of the work here at New Heights Church. They were afraid that we, our church, were going to quote-unquote steal their people. And, 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 and if you know me at all, you know that's not my goal. My goal is not to steal someone else's sheep. Um, the truth of the matter is our target, our heart is to reach people who are unchurched or people who are not going to church whatsoever. And, and so they were afraid that we were going to take that, that, that from them. Needless to say, when this happened to me, i got to tell you, I didn't like it much. Needless to say, when this happened to me, I felt betrayed. I got angry, you know, and truthfully, I wanted to call them up and give them a piece of my mind. But then I realized I don't have a whole lot of my mind left, and if I give any away... <laughs> so I prayed. And yes, I called a friend, and yes, I vented to that friend, and yes, I am... Okay with it now. Have you ever, have you ever felt that way? 
it's so silly of me to ask, because if you've lived any life at all, you have experienced exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe not the same circumstances, but you've experienced that today. And, and, and you know, when we go through that process, backbiting or somebody cutting our throat or being used or whatever it may take, may, we don't like that because it reduces us. It minimizes us to something that we, we don't want to be an object. We don't want to be a stepping stone. We don't want to be, you know, whatever. And it causes us to want to retaliate. So once again, let me ask you to please forgive those individuals. And let me apologize to any person that's harmed you that falls under the category of church people. Jesus understood this. Matter of fact, Jesus experienced this on many levels and on many terms. And, and what I want to do today is, is go into His Word because He gives us great wisdom. He gives us great understanding on how to deal with issues like this, how to, how to handle situations like this. As a matter of fact, we can look at His words, but we get a better picture of what He meant by those words, by how He lived His life. His life gives us a picture. It depicts a picture of what Jesus truly meant. When he said, love your enemies. Let me ask you this question. How would this world be different? How would your world be different if Christians really love their enemies the way Jesus does? In the book of Matthew chapter 5, if you have your Bible, I hope you do. Go ahead and turn with me. If you don't, it's going to be up here on the screen. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Here's what it says. You have heard that it was said that if you love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Originally, God said it this way. Originally, God said, love your neighbor. And as human beings, as you do, as I do, they, as they did, we all sort of deduce things that God says to us. And so they took this and, and they sort of deduced this. They said, well, if God says to love your neighbor, <laughs> the opposite of love is hate, the opposite of neighbor is your enemy, that means that we can say love your neighbor, but you can hate your enemy. And you see, God never said to hate your enemy. This was man's insight. This was man's wisdom. This was man taking what God's Word says and adding to it, if you will, and and it brought to my attention how often that we view life from our lens, from our world view, and we miss seeing God. How often do we miss the promise and the blessings of God because we don't pursue God's understanding? How often is it that we reduce God and we minimize His blessings simply because we choose to believe what we believe? We choose to believe what makes sense. We choose to believe what feels good at that time and not truly believe, not truly live out what God's Word says, what the truth really is. Look at what verse 44 says. But I say to you, love those who love you. Pray for those who pray for you. Help me out there, brother. I don't have to memorize it. Go to the next one. Now, that's, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. Let me go back here. Verse 44. But I say to you, love those who love you. Pray for those. Bless those who bless you. Do good to those who do good to you. And pray for those who pray for you. Is that what it says? Not what it says at all. That's how we live. Can I be real candid? Can it? If we were to separate it into two categories, what it says and how we live, which one would you fall into? Which one would your life fall into? But I say to you, love those who only love you. Bless those who only bless you. You know, it's so easy for us to, to fall into that category. But Jesus says, love your enemies. Jesus says, bless those that curse you. Jesus says, do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Now, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Seriously? You really want me to act that way? You really? Come on, that's getting real, right? And therein lies the problem. There is the hinge that causes us to miss life, if you will. The reality is we do opposite of what Jesus did. We do opposite of what Jesus tells us to do. The reality is we do what we feel is right. And in so doing that, we don't apply the Word of God. And when we don't apply the Word of God, it ultimately leads to our failure. 
It ultimately leads to us messing up. It ultimately leads to us missing the target. When we think about our neighbor, I tell you, love your neighbor. We think about people that we get along with. We think about people who have the same beliefs that we have. The same people who look, the people who look the same as you and I look like. We go to the same church. We, we belong to the same organizations. We, we're on the same party. I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican. You know, and Jesus says, oh, you're missing it. You're missing it. He reminds us so many places. Specifically, He reminds us right here. Simply, He reminds us right here. Love your neighbors. To love your, those who are your enemies. I've challenged us this month. God has given me, I believe, a message this month for us to love boldly. And if we're going to love boldly, then we've got to love in a way that's unoffended. We've got to love in a way that's unconditional. So, how does that look? How does that look? Verse 44 says, I say to you, love your enemies. You see, if we're going to love unoffending, if we're going to love unconditionally, if we're going to be bold in our love, we better realize that if we love our enemies, that's not natural. Is it natural for you to like your enemies? Not to head this way. Come on, let's be honest, church. And God says, don't just like them. I want you to love them. It's not natural for us to do this. It's not natural behavior to love those who hurt me. Human nature is, I want to strike back. Human nature is, I want to revenge. I want to retaliate. My human nature, my first response is, I want to react in anger. I want to hate. I want to, I want to experience all the. I want to wish harm upon people. And God says, that's not it. Human nature is when I'm at my best, I'm going to keep my mouth closed. I'm going to keep my distance from them. I'm going to give them a cold shoulder. Come on, somebody give me a witness. And God says, no. Because the root of that is self. Because the root of that behavior is bitterness. And Jesus always showed compassion. Jesus showed compassion to everyone upon all people. I mean, when He was at the cross, now remember at the cross, Jesus had been spat upon. Jesus had been lied about. They'd gone to this phony trial and, and He had been, all these allegations that were untrue, they said were true. And now He's been beaten and He's worn out. People are laughing at Him. They're mocking Him. They're, they're spitting on Him. They're beating, they, He's beaten to death. And now we find Him hanging on the cross... And maybe hours or minutes or seconds right before he dies, he says these words. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. That's the love that Jesus is asking for you and for me. To love boldly. To love unoffending. To love unconditionally. We must recognize that it's not natural. That we have to do the very opposite of what we feel. And the primary, most unnatural thing for us to do, can you say it with me? Is forgive. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to forgive. It's time to forgive. When we don't forgive, let me tell you what, when we harbor unforgiveness... When we choose not to forgive, when we choose to hang on to all of those things, let me tell you what it's like. See if this makes sense to you. Does it make sense to you to take a glass of poison and to drink that glass of poison with the intent, with the hope that it kills that person that you don't like? <laughs> makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, does it? You'd be like, you've got to be out of your mind. And yet, folks, spiritually, listen to me. When we harbor unforgiveness, when we choose not to forgive, that's what we're doing. As a matter of fact, if you have said these words, well, I just can't forgive that person, I need you to check and see if you really, if you really surrender your life to Jesus. Because if you can't forgive, that is the thing that Jesus did. That is the thing that Jesus died for. That is the thing that set you free from the sin was forgiveness that you didn't earn, deserve, or, or should get credit for. But we think we, well, you know what, I'm good enough, I earned that. No, you didn't. God freely gave that to you. And if you really can't forgive, check your Christianity for 
is I really wonder about that. We've got to keep reminding ourselves that forgiveness is a process. It's much like grief. Forgiveness doesn't just happen overnight. Oftentimes, forgiveness is a process where we remind ourselves, I have forgiven this person. I have laid this at the feet of Christ. I have forgiven this person. I'm not going to buy into that thought. I'm not going to buy into that emotion. I'm not going to buy into that memory because I have already forgiven that person. I have laid that activity, that deed, that whatever it is, I have laid it at the foot of the cross and I'm going to let God take care of it. From this point. So loving boldly, loving unconditionally, loving in a way that's unoffending, it's not natural. And it leads us to do things. Jesus always says, do this, but then he tells us how to do it. He said, this is how I want you to love your neighbor. I want you to bless those who curse you. You see, God says this. This is how I want you to do it. I want you to love boldly by blessing people. Now, if I bless you, what have I got to do? Point your mouth. you got to speak. Now, we're real good at speaking about people who've hurt us, aren't we? We're real good at saying things about people who have harmed us or hurt us or attacked us. We're, but God says, no, I want you to be specific here. I want you to bless those. That means I want you to speak in a kind way toward those people. When you're face to face, I want you to love me by being courteous. <laughs> I want you to love me by being respectful. <laughs> I want you to show the love of Christ, how you love me by treating them as if I were them. Be respectful. Speak something positive toward them. And when you're talking behind their back, I want you to find a strength. And I want you to speak about that strength as opposed to how they treated you. How would your world change? How would that change your life if we just stopped right there? You know, you can learn a lot about an individual by how they talk about other people behind their back, can't you? How would that change your world? If you stopped right there by Jesus, I'm going to love my enemies, and this is how I'm going to love my enemies. Is this so crazy? First, I'm going to forgive them. I know it's just out of my, it just doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do something that doesn't make sense. And second, when I speak about them, I'm going to find something positive, some of their strengths, and I'm only going to speak their strengths another thing that Jesus asked us to do. Bless those who hurt you or harm you. And then it says to do good. There's that word to do good. You see, it's an action word. You can't have faith without action. Do you understand that? If you are a Christ follower, He demands us to be active. He demands us, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. How many of you said, I'm just waiting on the Lord? <laughs> How many of you know that when you're waiting on the Lord... You're the most active that you've ever been in your life because you're pursuing God. You're seeking God. And God says, now look, there is an element of faith here that I need. And that element of faith is I need you to do something. To love boldly. To love in a way that's unoffending. To love in a way that's unconditional. Means that we have to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That we've got to go out in our actions and do something for that individual that doesn't like you. Find a way to reach out to them. Find a way to extend God's grace and God's kindness. Find for a way, for an opportunity that God presents to you to love them like Jesus. Your enemy is hungry, feed him. If she's thirsty, give her something to drink that's cold and, and clean. Don't be mean. If they need clothes, then clothe them. The Bible says to overcome evil by doing good. Overcome evil by doing good. And then it all leads to this last one. Just pray. If we're going to love unconditionally, if we're going to love unoffending, we need to be prayerful. The best way to dismantle your anger, the best way to dismantle bitter, bitterness or hostility is through prayer. Prayer just disarms us. But we've got to be honest in prayer. We've got to be transparent in prayer. Don't take your religious hat or your religious mask to the throne room of God because God knows your heart anyway. Can I get a witness? So when you go in there and you're all, you know, these and thou, Lord Jesus, thou, 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 and God sees right through that. Let me tell you how I pray. 
If somebody makes me mad or hurts me or harms me or goes after my child, I go to the Lord and I said, Lord Jesus, I need you to judge them right now. And I'm calling the thunder and the fire and the, and, and the lightning of heaven down upon their life right this moment, Jesus. I need you to take care of them. I do. God gives me about how much time I need to vent. I'm mad at them, Lord, and I need you to be holy anger. Come on. And once I get through that, you got that like you're all holy. No, you don't do that. <laughs> and if you don't do that, the reason you don't do that is because you don't pray. You make me feel like I'm the only one. <laughs> but what I do is once I get through that, I start remembering, hey, Mark, <laughs> It's like the Holy Spirit moves on me, you know? You did something like that once. Oh, wait. Matter of fact, you did a couple things that might have been worse than that. Oh, wait a minute, God. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, God, you're right. You're right. And so I start praying for God's will to be done. Because you know what? Good or bad, from my perspective, God's will is perfect. Can I get a witness? Good or bad, however I view it, good or bad, God's will is what's best for their life. And so what I've learned is that when I start praying and get through all that fleshly stuff and I'm able to put myself in a position to pray the way that God wants me to pray, which is totally opposite of the way I want to pray, I want lightning to come down in the life and God says, I want you to pray for them the way that you would want to be prayed for if you were in their shoes. Oh, change the subject a little bit. Wait a minute, that for me. What would I want me praying for if that were me? How would I want to be prayed for if I'm doing that? It sort of changes it up a whole lot. So why? Why should we love this way? Because this is God's way. God, this is the way that God loves. Look at verse 45. It says, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Listen to this. For He, underline that word, for He makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. He makes it the sunrise. He sends the rain. You see, there are blessings that everybody gets from God. There are blessings that God gives to the just and the unjust, to the good and to the bad, to the evil and those that are good. It doesn't matter what category you fit in. There are certain blessings of God that He gives to you no matter where you are in the scope of things, no matter where you are in life. God has blessings for you. God loves you no matter where you fit there. And so God is saying, listen, I want you to behave like me. There was a moment in your life when you weren't right with God. And guess what? The sun rose and the sun set. And the next day the sun rose and then it set again, right? There were days when you weren't right with God and God sent the rain down on your life. There are days when you weren't right with God and God said, listen to me, I'm going to clothe you anyway. Here's some clothes, put them on you, be warm. I'm going to let you eat this food and I'm going to let your digestive system work the way that I created it to work so that you can be strong and healthy. You go ahead and do that. There's, I'm going to let you breathe. You get another breath of air. And you live another day. Blessings. When we love God unconditionally, and when we love people in a way that's unoffending, we're loving in a way that God does. And when we behave like God, when we do what God intends us to do, what God asks for us to do, verse 46 tells us something. There's a reward. It says, well, if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors do that. If you give to those who you know are going to give back, the world does that. Jesus in verse 46 and 47 is saying, when you love those who love you back, or when you give to those that you know are going to give back, that's no different than the world. That's exactly how the world functions. But I want you to stop acting like the world. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop acting like the world. Yeah. Start acting like Jesus. And to do that, we've got to change the way we're thinking. We've got to quit thinking natural thoughts and start thinking spiritual thoughts. God wants us wants to reward us. And each time we act like He does, each time we choose the way, the choices that He chooses, God blesses us. Listen to me. Each time you get betrayed, God is going to give you an opportunity to be blessed. Each time someone stabs you in the back, 
God, you can use that as an opportunity to be blessed of God. You can choose to get angry, to retaliate, to do what you want to do. You can choose that. Or, tell your neighbor, or. Or, you can come over on this side and you can say, God, I once lived that way, but now I want to live the way that you want me to live. I want to love like you love. I want to act like you act. I want to pray the way you want me to pray. And when that happens, God blesses you. When you choose to do what God wants, God recognizes that. And God blesses you. Jesus said this way, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth or rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for your treasures in heaven. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys or thieves can't break in and steal it. Here's what he's saying. You can do things that will make yourself rich in heaven. That will make yourself blessed in heaven. How you act here on earth determines how blessed you are. And the thing is, the way you act determines that. So if you act the way the world acts, you're robbing yourself. But if you choose to act or behave the way that God says, then God blesses you. And He asks you to give things away here on earth. One of the greatest ways to get heaven, a treasure in heaven is by giving things away here on earth. So let me tell you how Mark likes to manipulate the system. This is not how you do it, by the way. You know, Mark sees a new phone and he thinks, man, I'd love to have that new phone. So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out and I'm going to give my phone away so that I can get a new phone. Oh, you haven't done that either. Come on. That's not how you do it. If you really want to get a treasure in heaven, what you do is you keep the phone you have, your old phone, and you go to wherever it is that you buy the phone, for, and you get the new phone, and you give the new phone to someone. And then God says, you'll have a treasure in heaven. I said, see, that's the best example by loving. Don't meet the world's standards. Don't live like the world lives. Focus on something that doesn't make sense. Loving people that love you back is a natural thing. Giving to people who give back to you, that just makes sense. But God says, I want you to go beyond that. I want you to do like I do. I want you to love like I do. Love those who won't love you back. Give to those who won't give you back. And when you do this, I see it. And when I see it, I will reward you. So how do we do that? Because I tried to practice this this week. Come on. I really tried to practice this this week. And I really got hung up here. How do we do this? How do, Lord, I want to do it, but how do I, what are my steps? And here it is. It's in verse 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Here it is. And if you greet your brethren, circle that word. If you greet your brethren only, what more do you have? When we love everyone as our siblings. Everyone as our siblings. That's how we're doing it. When we, we love them and we don't expect anything back. When we give to them, we don't expect anything back. That's the unoffending, that's the unconditional love that God is talking about because that's how I love my sibling. I love my sibling this way. I'm not going to expect anything. If I give that something, give something to my brother, I don't expect it back. Truthfully, I know I'm not giving it back. And I'm all right with it. I've learned that. You know what I'm saying? Can I tell you, this is, a, this is not anything to do with my sermon. It's to give you a point. My, my brother got out of college. He's a doctor. And he'd love to go visit him. house and I'd go visit him. He's like, man, all right, let's go. I want to take you to the best restaurant in town. And you can get order anything you want off the menu. And I'm buying. So we go do that, right? We order the most expensive thing. And, I, and he, I, he'd even make us do it. And we'd get to the place where we'd check. He'd get the ticket. And we'd go up to check out. And he'd go... Oh man. I left my wallet at home. Okay. So I put my wallet out. I paid for it. You know what? I got used to that. I knew it was going to happen. But he's my brother. I'm not going to hold it against him. I'm going to laugh at him an awful lot. When he watches this on TV, on the internet, he's going to be like, oh, here we go again. Folks. When we can do that for a stranger, when we can do that 
for someone that has said bad things about us or tried to harm us, look what verse 48 says. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. What? How can you say that? Because when you're acting that way, you are acting as if God Himself would act if God were in your shoes. When you live, when you live your life that way, you are living exactly the way Jesus lived when He was on this earth. You see, the word, the Bible described God as love, and so when we choose to love, not as our hearts would love or as the world would love, but when we choose to take it to the next level, to love as God would love, and our actions depict. His love. God Himself is there. And God Himself is loving that person just as if it were Him. I shared a little bit of that story, my story with you earlier. And what I didn't share about when we started this church was what God did for that. I told you God rewards you. Listen to this. When, when those people that received the letters and the phone calls called me and they said, listen, we've got these allegations, we need to do an audit. We need to do an investigation on you because we just need to know if this is true or not. They're trying to be kind. They believe. Hey, come on. This is who we are. This is what we believe. This is what we teach. This is how we live our church. This is what we're... Come on. I welcome you with open arms. They came. They did the audit. You know what happened? God won them all. They ended up writing us a check for $100,000. Now, do you think those people who made that phone call and wrote those letters were like, oh, my what was I doing, you know? God used it for the good. Here's the thing. When you choose to love like God loves, when you choose to live as God lives, God will take those moments in your life that people meant for harm, and He will turn them, He will twist them into a blessing, into something that is good for you when you love like He does. When you live like He does. Love unconditionally. In a way that's unoffended. Let me tell you something else. They invited me to, th to three state-level speaking events. I've never been to a state-level, you know, I, and, and all, all of that, God used that to bless me. So let me ask you, what might happen in your world? If you today love boldly, if you today love unconditionally, if you today love unoffending in such an, a way that's unoffending, what would change in your world? To those who people who are persecuting you, to those people who are backbiting, trying to get your job, trying to get your whatever, how would that change? What might happen? What might happen the next time this name comes up of this individual that you know has been against you, and instead of speaking bad things, you spoke something good. You said something positive. What, what might happen if that opportunity for you to exact revenge, and instead of taking, you had this opportunity, but instead of taking the opportunity, you chose instead to love, to show mercy. What would happen in your home with your husband or your wife and your kids, with your family, your friends, if you would love? What would, could, would there be healing? Would there be restoration if you love like God loved? Let me ask you this, church, because you see it all the time. What would happen to the gay and the lesbian political move today if we Christians love like God loves? We'd knock their legs right at the money. Not in a bad way. But they wouldn't have anything to stand on. Because now instead of seeing this judgmental, harsh, you're going to hell, you're doing this, they would experience this, God loves you. And God's got a message for you. Just like God loves me, and God has a message for me. That would change things. What about those that are addicted to pornography? Those that are addicted to, to drugs? Those that are addicted to alcohol? Those who are addicted to relationships or codependent? What would happen if we would quit pointing the fingers of judgment? You're doing this and you're doing that. And we would offer the arms of grace. And look, God loves you. God loves you. He sent a son to die for you just like he did for me. Would that change? Would that change? Church, I believe it would. I believe that we would be able to reach our city. I believe that we would be able to reach our county. I would believe that I believe that God would be able to change our state and even the United States in such a crazy, dynamic way that we can't even begin to fathom because of grace. Because of mercy. Because it truly is the love of God. 
So as we bring this to a close, I want to ask you to do something. If, if you're visiting with us, if you're a guest, we, we welcome you. And this may seem a little bit uncomfortable, but I promise you we're not pulling the snakes out when we do this. We're just talking to God. I want to welcome you. I want to invite you to do that with us. And one of the ways we do that with you, we humble ourselves at the Lord by bowing our head. And I'm going to ask if you would just to bow your head and to close your eyes as we talk to God. And, and if you, as you're doing that, maybe you're here today, and all your life you simply wanted to be accepted. All your life you, you simply wanted to be loved for who you are. And you're here because that's the message that God wants to send to you. You're here today because God wants you to know that He loves you just the way that you are. And that Jesus died for your sin and my sin. And as a matter of fact, it's Jesus that brought you here today. And if that's you, you're here today and, and, and that describes you, you might want to pray this prayer with me. God, thank you for loving me. Help me to understand how you love me. I want to experience this love that I've never experienced before. I want to know more about this love that just recognizes who I am. And so, Father, I come to you today. I don't have the words, but I just want to know you. I want to know more about you. And I'm wondering if you might could forgive me for what I've done wrong. And I'm wondering maybe if you might come into my life and, and let me really experience your love. Maybe you're here today and you've had similar issues as what I've had I've talked to about. You've been beat up. You've been beat down. And it was a so-called Christian that did it. But you've realized today that God wants to heal you. God wants to restore you. God wants to cleanse you so that you can go and show the love of Christ. Maybe you might pray a prayer like this. God, you've forgiven me once. You've forgiven me many times. And today you've brought up, you've convicted me, you've shown me where that I haven't forgiven this person. I'm holding, I'm harboring unforgiveness. And today I want to forgive just like you forgave me. Today I want to love just like you loved me. Today I want you to come into my life in such a crazy, magnificent way. And I want to experience your love on such a level that when I leave, it just flows out. That's my prayer, God. Fill me with you. In Jesus' name. If you prayed one of those two prayers, you just lift your hand. Just raise your hand. Bless you. Bless you. Wow. God bless you. Yeah. If you prayed one of those prayers and you raised your hand, would you take your card, that communication card that I showed you at the beginning, and just mark on it so that I know how to pray for you? Maybe I can give you some further steps to go. We're getting ready to take up the offering here in just a minute, and, and we can do that then. We can take those cards up then, but would you just take a minute and write on that card? You made a decision for Jesus today. You can write on that card. What decision? Right. Amen. Would you stand with us? We're going to sing this song. And you may want to come and pray. You may make a decision today, and you want to come and, and you want me to pray for you, or pray with you. We can have others do that. This is a time for you to get on your knees before the Lord and to get right with God. To be empowered by God to do what God has called you to do. To be who God has called you to be. As we sing, if you need to come and pray, would you come?
maybe God's stirring your heart. And maybe you're thinking there, God, if you just have that pastor come up one more time and say, we're going to extend this, we're going to let you know. Well, this is the time. Maybe you've got a need, maybe you've got an unforgiveness, maybe you've got, I don't know, but you know. Don't let this time pass you by. Take God seriously and come and pray. Come and seek His faith with us. We will pray with you. That's what we're here for. So we're going to sing that. We're going to keep singing that song. What a great song. Teach me to do this. And as we keep singing that song, God has His hands extended out saying, I love you this much. Will you come to me? Will you come to me? That's it, church. Will we come? As we sing this song. But he